people here? That's good. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. So, um, yeah, perfect. So, um, welcome. Um, today's session will be about the communication service with the OpenStack. And uh, my name is Alex Melik. I work for Interactive Intelligence. And uh, our company is uh, based out of Indianapolis. We do provide unified communications, collaborations, and uh, customer engagement solutions to our customers. We, pr we deliver them in two main um, modes. So we sell end product, which customer install on their premises. And we run cloud offering, which we call communication as a service. So um, we, the company is tw 20 years old. It's uh, been in one of the leaders in this market and uh, has 6,000 plus customers around the globe. We, um, we run our services in multiple geographies. We basically have data centers around the world. Uh, we do cloud delivery. Um, today we run our cloud offering. It's been in business for it's been offered for four years now, and it runs perfectly. It's uh, it does very good job. We have a lot of satisfied customers. The main reason why we start looking at the new platform um, it was that. Our customers surprised us with the uptake of the cloud offering. Originally, it was started as everyone tried to do the cloud, keep the toe in the water and see what will happen. We did the same four years ago, and suddenly the uptake was so huge that we have really hard time keep up with the demand and onboard customers fast enough. So um, the one more important piece to mention here is that the services which we offer from the cloud, they are based on real-time communication. So our requirements for the, the platform which underpins our offering is potentially a bit different than many other customers of the OpenStack have. So we really have strong dependencies on the network. That's one of the key requirements which we have, that the network needs to be flawless. If you have web uh, application, you can miss a packet, TCP retry will send it again, life will be good, everything will be working still. Uh, with uh, real-time communications, if you miss a packet for the phone conversations, you get dead air, you get unsatisfied customers, and that's uh, um, one of the, from our perspective, that's one of the outages on our platform. So we need to make sure that platform works flawlessly. The other important differentiator for us is compared to many other people who were presenting this conference is that for us, um, offering pl the platform itself is not the end product. We don't offer platform to internal groups or to the customers. We don't really sell virtual machines. We don't read them. What we sell is the our communication as a service. So the platform is hidden from our customers. Customers don't really get visibility into what we run. What is important is that it runs and it stays up and, and the, the delivery of the uh, interactions is happening flawlessly. So, so when we start looking at the uh, new platform to um, accelerate our delivery, we, we basically had three main goals in mind. Uh, we need to reduce time to market. So we need to deliver faster, sign up new customer, deliver faster. Uh, we need to increase stability. And uh, stability was high. And, but we definitely cannot go below what was there. We need to do better with new platform. And of course, reduce cost, every management Oh, every executive will tell you that you're not putting anything in until you're telling them that you will reduce the cost one way or the other. Uh, so 
focus areas for us was number one, of course, is stability. Even though the executive saying, well, the cost is important, the first thing which they keep in mind is stability. If platform goes down, it's cheaper, but it goes down, it's not gonna work. So you, the stability is, was number one uh, requirement for us. Security is very big in our business. We offer products for the call centers. Uh, we have financial institutions. We have healthcare companies as our customers, and they have very strict requirements on securing the information which they provide to us. So for example, as a, a financial institution, a lot of them, they take credit cards over the phone. They need to make sure that that information doesn't leak out ever. So, uh, same for the healthcare, they have HIPAA requirements which secures the information uh, for their customers as well as their employees. Scalability is important. We've seen that growth could be explosive. We need to make sure that we can scale and continue on uh, building the platform and increase the size and scalability. Agility is um, the area where and we coming from the lessons which we learn is that whatever you put in place is not your, it pretty much never your final product. As soon as you get done with something, you will find out that you need to change it. You get new business requirements, you get new set of customers. Uh, so you, for example, you build the offering thinking that only small customers will come and start using your service and the next day you find out that you got humongous customer and requirements from them is very different than used to be from the small ones. So you need to adjust, you need to uh, have a platform which allows to do that. Uh, flexibility, that's another area. We, we offer a lot of options to our customers, for example, from connectivity perspective. They can connect to us through internet, they connect through VPN, MPLS. So all those connectivity options is important. Um, as well as we want to have a flexibility when we decide to make the next move or improve our platform. If, for example, we have to adjust or add new products or adjust the currently deployed products, we have that flexibility as well. And, and the cost, of course, that's, that's the area of focus. Um, so the partners which we selected for our platform was the Plum Grid providing the SDN basically fueling the, um, <coughs> the platform. We have Piston Cloud as an open source, or open stack distribution, and we run Cumulus as an operating system for the switches. So, so uh, I will talk about each area a little bit more in details, give you more visibility into what, uh, what we have done, how we address particular area of the focus. So with stability, the one of the major thing we wanted to achieve, or the, to, get the, to get to the stability, the one of the area we want to address was that uh, in, a, and, when, and we learned the hard way, if you have a platform which requires human touch, humans tend to make errors, intentionally or unintentionally, it doesn't really matter, they make errors, platform get affected, you have uh, outage, big or small, it's reduce your SLA and uh, your customers are really sta starting to questioning your stability of the platform overall and how you uh, operate in it. Um, the other area which is affects the stability of course is that with uh, OpenStack and SDN um, underneath you actually get the great opportunity to deploy or to implement the continuous integration. Typically, it's very challenging to do in your standard enterprise deployment model, whether you have a lot of hardware resources, let's say if you do support the hardware networking, which you need to duplicate production in your development environment. In a lot of cases, it's just impossible from the cost perspective. As you run very big, um, um, e equipment in the production. If you do the miniature scale in the development, typically it doesn't give you the same 
look and feel, and you cannot really test the same way as the production. So, with the with the uh, this new platform, what we were able to achieve, we basically have three different types of uh, of the environments. We have development environment, stage environment, and uh, production environment. They all build exactly the same way. The only difference is the number of compute nodes how many compute resources you put on it. So you really can test in a development and stage what you will be putting in production one for one. And uh, the last point is important is that with this platform, we also get the opportunity to really draw the line between the physical implementation and the virtual implementation. So whatever implementation we have for our application in the virtual world, it can change and can be morphed and it's pretty much not dependent on what we have done in the physical layer. So, for, so this is what we deploy in. Uh, we basically have the, uh, our internal world, physical world, where we have the compute nodes, directors for the uh, plum grid and gateways, and the uh, internal network. That environment basically built once, and it doesn't change until you deploy additional nodes. So whatever external connectivity coming in, we pushed it to the side, we keep it on the edge network. That network get modified, changed, etc. But those changes really not trickle down into this uh, platform environment. So uh, that gives us a lot of um, that gives us, a, us ability is to solidify the platform physical layout, test it, work out all the bugs. And since we don't have to change it, it's pretty much run steady and uh, stable for a long time. And the other thing which we learned the hard way also is that OpenStack and uh, SDNs, all the, it's a software applications. They run very well if you underlying infrastructure runs well. So when something happens in underlying infrastructure, it starts affecting the higher layers in a very unpredictable manner. So sometimes it's easy to figure out what's happening. Sometimes you see side effects, and it takes a long time to come to the um, resolution where that actual problem is. So by basically separating external world from the internal world, helps to solidify the platform. So the other area of focus, the next area of focus is security. We have a lot, we have big security team who do look after us in uh, cert supporting our certification. We have PCI certification, we have HIPAA certification. So they're making sure that whatever we do with the new platform, we don't break uh, the model. So. Uh, they have a lot of interesting requirements. Some of them we agree with, some of them we don't agree with, but in the end, we have to implement them. <laughs> Doesn't matter what we think about them. So uh, the, some of the um, areas which we been pushed hard on uh, from the security is the tenant isolation. Every tenant has its own data and that there should be no leakage of the data between the tenants. Uh, that's addressed pretty well with combination of projects in the OpenStack and virtual domains in the Plum Grid product. So we feel pretty comfortable with that implementation. Then the other two is encryption at rest, uh, or encryption of data at rest and encryption of data in transit. So um, you know, with uh, Piston Cloud uh, OpenStack distribution, they do encryption at rest by default. Plum Grid is working on the encryption transit. So those two areas will be covered nicely. The other interesting part is the DMZ requirement. That comes from the interpretation of the PCI requirements that you have to have DMZ and the access rules are not enough. So what we were able to do was the flexibility which Plum Grid provides to us is we actually build the DMZ as a project in OpenStack, and we build a tenant as a project and then link them together. That linkage is invisible from the OpenStack, but uh, 
uh, still all the security access rules, security policies applicable uh, to uh, that interface because dials are managed by Plum Grid and they do a very good job of securing those both ends. And uh, in our environment, we basically have one DMZ which links to multiple tenant virtual domains or projects. Um, from the scalability perspective, our approach was, since we know we will scale up, there is no way around it, we will be moving more and more customers from existing platform to the new platform, and we see s still significant demand of the customers ca wanting to get on our service. So whatever building blocks we put in, in place, we maximizing them up front. So we basically order the biggest and uh, most stuffed up <laughs> with the gear Quanta servers. Um, we also uh, basically, our approach was is build our environments as a pods. So we have a two racks set up with servers in them, maximized and uh, when we need to expand, we just add two more racks. Uh, we do the pods with two racks primarily to achieve the um, um, high availability and redundancy. We have top of the rack switches on both and they, we wire every server to both sides. And then on top, we do just uh, pretty much same model as uh, Marcel was mentioning for the Swisscom as we do uh, a leaf and uh, spine network architecture and we do the layer three network on top. Oh, and the last point sir, is that uh, leveraging NFV is, is very important. We, I mean, we address some of the requirements with the virtual machines, but any time when our vendors come up with the new implementation, we leverage them and we're trying to push as much of the networking related capabilities into the platform layer and remove the VMs from there. Um, so from the ag agility perspective, so we have the platform uh, which what we see in our existing cloud environment is continuously changing. The, world, the way how we addressing some of those requirements, we have to build parallel environments every time. So we want to break that model into, into, into a new uh, platform and we basically <clears throat> looking at, uh, and w when we chose the platform, we look, looked at the ability for us to control the transformation of the environment. So, for example, we get a new requirement, we, we develop the path, how we will evolve existing customers to the new one, test the de development environment, script all the necessary transformations, put it in a stage, validate again, and then push it to production. So. Uh, that's also, I mean, will give us ability to add functionality, bring in new applications on the platform. Uh, from flexibility, of course, we want no vendor lock-in, I mean, as much as possible. And what that means to us is really, we, we just want to have the flexibility that if things are changing significantly, and the paths we're on diverge from the path where the vendor wants to stay on. We have the flexibility to switch the, uh, switch the provider, go with another. For example, the, from OpenStack perspective, the benefit which you got with OpenStack, there is multiple distribu distributions and you can switch between them, but you, at the same time, you don't lose any automation work which you done for the previous platform because it maintains the same APIs. Uh, all the interfaces stay the same. The fact that you changed the distribution doesn't really affect that dramatically. And of course that means that pretty much every product which you select needs to have solid APIs. So you develop the automation scripts to the APIs. You don't do any uh, proprietary non-standard ways of doing things. 
So and the other flexibility, which is important, is uh, you have vendors in the OpenStack community which offer you different uh, support models. So you can go from some of the companies who offer you a product, or you can uh, all the way to the companies who offer services only. And uh, you have flexibility to choose between them. Our approach in this scenario is we went with companies who offer products because we develop the products that mentality is easier for us to work with. But if you know, the flexibility is there, if we need help or we want to switch the gears and go with a different model, we, we can. So what's the results we got so far is yes, we increased speed to market. Now the deployment of new customer increased significantly. Um, we also uh, were able to adapt the continuous integration model, which helps us with stability, which helps us with um, with more controlled way of rolling out new functionality. Which, I mean, in the, the one part which I'm not mentioning there, that there's cultural change, of course, in the company when you do something like that, that's still going on, that's, we're still working through it. It's, uh, it's definitely a challenge, but at least we have the tools in place, which we, ho we can show the real results and show the benefits from them. And uh, the last point, which might seem s uh, small, but it's actually very significant when you run big cloud offering and you're delivering your application. What we have seen is that when you start, when you enter the cloud offering, you build, um, you build the infrastructure to support the application. And it's all good for the first wave. And over time, the infrastructure which you build becomes limiting factor for your application. So you want to morph the application, you start running into a situation where you have to rebuild infrastructure significantly. Therefore, you start forcing your application to adapt to infrastructure you have. And that's, uh, that's quite a challenging situation to be in, because market demand quicker change. And if you cannot adapt to that, uh, you get more and more pushback from the customers. Because uh, every customer expect when they hear the word cloud, they expect that it's some kind of magic which morphs automatically. You ask for anything and it gets delivered next day. So it's all kind of the, all the expectations are there. So you just need to build a platform which support that. So what was the challenges which we ran into? Uh, the first challenge which took a little bit of time for us <laughs> to work through is that there's too many options. So uh, there's a lot of projects in the OpenStack. They all look great. It's all shiny stars. You try to jump on all of them. And uh, that's, I mean, it's, it's good to do that. But it typically, if you start chasing them all, you will limit your time to deliver the real results. So, so we had to limit the functionality which we were getting from the OpenStack to what we need now, understanding that if we need to add more over time, we have the capability to do that. So instead of trying to try out every possible option and see how we can tie them all together, we decided to shrink the scope and implement what absolutely necessary for this phase, and then be prepared to add on or evolve over time. So uh, the other point is that network requirements which we had, it uh, they exceeded the ones which were offered through the neutrons. So we had to integrate with, for some of the functionality. We had to integrate with the Plum Grid directly using their APIs directly. So we built our own orchestration layer, which orchestrates the creation of the environment where you have most of the 
activities performed in the open st in the open stack and some of them being uh, supplemented by the changes made in the in the uh, plum grid directly and uh, and the, th those requirements so for example we have since we do the telephony applications they very intolerable to any kind of nets in the past so anytime you spin up the network which has a net in it uh, you will not get very good results so you will get no results <laughs> so that 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 forces us to build the environment maybe uh, slightly different than uh, what uh, overall thinking in the OpenStack community is how the network needs to be laid out but again that's that's our application we need to put that in place and uh, the very important point on the stability of the environments yes it takes time and it takes a lot of energies what we were fortunate with is that the vendors who we're working with they willing to partner with us and that's uh, very important because coming from one implementation environment to the other sometimes you're trying to just replicate what you used to have in that environment and as the end result you go against the philosophy of the new one and that only creates problems when you do it that way so when you have the vendors who are partners they will listen to your requirements and they will suggest the appropriate implementations and that might change your requirements as well or how you approach the new design so that collaboration is extremely important and for us we very we were very fortunate that we got those partners and we worked very closely with them so um, and a few lessons which we learn and uh, we want to pass on is that number one is yes, don't try to boil the ocean focus on what's important at this stage because what we also learn is that you pretty much never will build the end product up front <laughs> you will whatever you will build will be obsolete as soon as you're done building so you you don't try to build a humongous castle and hoping that you will put people in it start with small house and then build it up as you get more people coming in which also very interesting discovery was is that when you go from standard enterprise delivery model into the OpenStack delivery model or, or with the OpenStack you're basically shifting from kind of standard IT methodology to more development methodology and that's where you can look at that like the agile development which says that do what implement requirements you have in front of you now don't try to build for something which you're dreaming up so do it now environment will support you to add on to it over time rather than build build the end product and hoping that that will stay forever so um, very important point which I mentioned is that if you can find the vendors which are willing to partner with you that will be very beneficial that's that will make life significantly simpler finding all those roads on your own it can be very lengthy path and uh, the last of course is when you build the environment you're happy with it that's the time when you need to start working on the next one or the next iteration of your environment because whatever you build will not be final product anyway so and with that if you have any questions. <laughs> no questions? Man, I covered it well. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate your time.